welcome to another edition of Motor Age How To. We're going to pick up where we left off last time in the series entitled Getting Friendly With Your Scope. Uh, now, if you recall, in the first video we uh, started on this topic, we talked about how to access the wiring, how to access the electrical circuit that you're trying to get a signal from and do it without causing any future problems in the process. We talked a little bit about back probing and piercing. If you missed that episode, just go to our YouTube channel and you can find it there. Today, we're gonna to move forward and using the scope and we're gonna talk a little bit about time and voltage divisions and what they are, how to set those up, all right? So stick around, that's coming up next. Now, one of the things you need to know how to do when you're using your scope is to set the time and voltage divisions. In other words, again, this is a graph, and if you remember back in middle school, we had an X and a Y axis, and we had to assign values along those axes in order to be able to plot the points on our graph and then have that graphical display. Well, no different here. Now, we'll start with the bottom. On the horizontal side of the, of the screen, this is where you're going to find the time base, the time divisions. And it's charted off vertically up the length of the graph. And in this case, it's set to one second per division or per section. Now there are 10 on the screen. So that gives us a total sweep time, a sweep time of 10 seconds on that screen. Now this can be set to read actually in nanoseconds and in as high as, believe it or not, 5,000 seconds per division if we ever needed that kind of time frame. But just for, we're gonna start off with this example and you'll see where we're going with this as we proceed. So again, I have one second per division, in other words, one second here, then another second here, two, three, four, and so on, till we get to 10. On some model scopes, when you make that, that time setting, you don't go by divisions. It's gonna ask you what you want for total sweep or the total time on the screen. So if that scope, and most of them do, have 10 divisions, 10 sections, then you're going to set that scope for 10 seconds. Then you'll have the same time base that I'm showing you here. Now the next item we wanna look at is the, uh, the vertical line, the vertical axis. And of course, we're gonna bring this out horizontally across the graph. This is the voltage side of the scale. And again, we can measure from, from microvolts and all the way up into, on this particular one, up to plus or minus 100 volts on the screen. And in this case, it's telling us that's the total range that we're seeing here. I'm set to 100 plus or minus 100 volts. So if the center line is here, that means that each division over, because there are 10 total, will be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 above, and again, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 negative uh, on that screen. So that's what we, we have, what we have there. Now, I want you to take a look at the picture I'm showing you of what we have on the screen. And with the screen running, we just have this one solid little line here. Now, does that mean that I'm not connected properly or that I'm not where I need to be with my leads? No, not necessarily. Again, keep in mind what our voltage and, and time divisions are set to. And that's where you want to think about when you're deciding that you want to check a certain signal on the automobile. What voltages do you typically think that you're going to see? You're not going to see plus or minus 100 very often. There are a few instances, and we will discuss that as we proceed with this series. But for most of the tests you're going to take, you're dealing with 12 volt systems, right? So even with the engine running, maybe 14, 15 volts is the peak that you're going to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a voltage level equivalent to what we would see on a typical automobile. So I'm just going to come up to the setting and rather than having plus or minus 100, let's go with plus or minus 20. And we'll run the scope and see what happens to our pattern. Okay, so you take a look at the blow up that we have of the screen that I have here on the, on the monitor. And now you can see that we can actually see some spikes of something. So maybe we are on the right track. Take a close look at where the peaks of those spikes are. They're capping out not quite at four volts, aren't they? Well, that means I can make another adjustment in order to increase the size of that graph, increase the size of that picture and get a closer look. So let's do that next. Go to the adjustments, select plus or minus five. That should cover it. and cake our capture again. OK, 
Okay, now in terms of voltage, our capture is taking up more room on the graph, isn't it? We can see it much easier, but they're still kind of close together. Again, think of the time base we're using, plus, or, uh, plus one second for each division, 10 seconds total. How many things do you know of on a car that it takes 10 seconds for it to happen? Not very many. Consider, for example, how long it takes for a spark plug to fire. A couple of milliseconds tops. Same with the fuel injectors, three, four, maybe five milliseconds for a pulse width. So let's adjust the time settings now to get us down to something that we're more used to seeing. I think I'm gonna go with 10 milliseconds per division. So that'll give me one second total on the screen and see what happens. What a difference choosing the right time and voltage divisions makes, doesn't it? Now I have a pattern that I can actually see and understand. If I want to, I can simply freeze it to take a closer look. There's some other features with this particular tool that I can also put into effect to, to take a closer look at it. But now I think you see the, the importance of setting up your time and voltage divisions to, a, to somewhat close to what you're expecting the pattern to be, to be living in. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, if you're going to test most 12 volt actuators, for example, or a pulse width system, you, you can use that, that plus or minus 20 volt range. If you want to figure out the speed, well again, consider how long does it take for that particular event to happen. Most of the time it's going to be in a millisecond range when it comes to actuators, pulse width control devices, and the like. As we go through these other different tests, I'll show you uh, typical settings for what we're going to be testing uh, so that you can make note of those. Keep those in a little black book if you want in your toolbox. Uh, and we'll keep proceeding through this process of getting friendly with your scope. <laughs>